If you plan to ever take your Bronco off-road, you need to install this compressor mount. I wanna let you know that I was sent this mount and compressor in exchange for filming this video, and that if enough of you decide to purchase it, I will make a small commission. Adding the ARB twin compressor under the hood of any vehicle is usually a tricky and complicated install. The KR off-road compressor mount for the Bronco from 4x4 truck LEDs is the most straightforward compressor mount I have ever installed. I can already tell that if you clicked on this video, you will want to pick one of these bad boys up. They even gave me a code that will save you 10%, not just on the bracket, but on the whole kit. So just enter McBride at checkout and save big on the bracket, an ARB twin compressor, and that pump kit. With all the disclaimers out of the way, let's talk about this thing. The mount is two pieces, a leg and then the actual plate where the compressor mounts. Included with it are the carriage bolts and the nylocks to join the two pieces together when it's all installed, a heat shrink butt connector to wire the switch to the Ford auxiliary switches, and then a zip tie. If you add a compressor, I really do recommend the ARB twin compressor. This thing has been on every one of my vehicles and I cannot say enough good things about it. Once you take it out of the box, the filters will not be connected. So we'll just, uh, we'll do that later. You will get three harnesses with the compressor. The first is the main power harness. The second is the switch harness. And the third is the switch extension harness or splitter cable to connect the compressor to the air lockers if you have those. You should also receive an ARB branded power switch. Make sure not to toss the box before finding the hardware bag. This is how you will mount the actual compressor to the KR off-road mount. As for tools, I used a 19 millimeter, a 13 millimeter, and a 10 millimeter box wrench. Make sure that at least the 13 millimeter is a ratcheting one, an eight millimeter and 10 millimeter socket, and a 15 millimeter deep socket, an extension, and then a ratchet. You may also find it handy to have a blade of some kind, a trim removal tool, and a number two Phillips head screwdriver. For wiring, I used some wire snips, needle nose pliers, and a stripping slash crimping tool. I also used an Allen key set to attach the switch directly to the ARV twin compressor. Lastly, you'll want a heat gun. These things aren't that expensive, and most of these tools you can find on Amazon. I will add links in the description below the video. It'll also be really helpful to have various diameters of heat shrink and add a fuse, some spare fuses, electrical tape, additional butt connectors, and some ring terminals. You want some Teflon tape too. Mine was buried in a drawer, so it didn't make it into this shot, but just know that you do want Teflon tape for some of those pneumatic fittings, those air fittings. This is the switch plate that I found to mount directly to the compressor. These are made in both a left and a right configuration. I ended up buying both of them just so I could figure out which one worked best. So with the air filters of the compressor towards the engine bay, the right side bracket is the one that worked best. It didn't interact or touch the hood, flip the switch or anything like that. And I have linked this below for you as well. Now to get to the actual install, begin by adding the filters to the compressor. These can be hand tightened. You really don't need any tools for them. Next, attach the compressor to the bracket to avoid the compressor from rubbing on the air box. Make sure you use the top row of mounting holes. They are on the skinny side of the bracket. Tighten these down with the 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. With the 15 millimeter deep socket, extension, and ratchet, loosen the shock mount bolt that is closest to the engine on the passenger side. Don't remove it all the way. If this thing drops, you will just, you will hate your life trying to find it. I had to test this a few times, but while you're working with that 15 millimeter deep socket, just try sliding the foot under that flange nut that you're loosening. Uh, that way you're not loosening it too far and you can make sure you just get the foot under there and then you can begin to tighten it down. So once it slides under, Tighten the bolt back up. This will want to be torqued to about 40 foot pounds and it's worth double checking after you've driven your Bronco for a few hundred miles. With that new leg installed, remove the three eight millimeter bolts holding the ground and computer module bracket to the passenger side. Keep these nearby, we'll be reusing all of this hardware. The mounting plate will sit between the body of the Bronco and the computer module bracket that you just removed. You can place the mount with the compressor mounted to it in the engine bay and then just rest it on that newly installed leg attached to the shock mount. I found it easiest to start with the top bolt of the bracket first, then the bottom, then the ground. Once all three were finger tight, I torqued them down just back to their normal spec. This next part was tough to film. 
Use the provided carriage bolts and nylocks to secure the foot of the plate. You'll likely need to bend that foot slightly towards the engine to get everything to line up. This is by design and it keeps everything super snug. It doesn't move at all. Now that you have the bracket installed, you have a choice. You can connect the switch to one of the Bronco's auxiliary switches. It's stupid easy. All you have to do is use that provided butt connector and connect the purple side of the switch wire to any of the auxiliary switches and it will just fire right up once you add power to the compressor. Uh, if you're like me and you want the switch near the compressor, continue to follow my steps. So. Uh, let's just dig into wiring everything up. Because it's all in the engine bay, this will be easy and won't require too much trickery. I started by adding the ring terminals to the power harness. You can do this with a hand squeeze crimper or if you like things extra snug, you can use a hydraulic crimper like I did. Notice how both the negatives are tied into one ring terminal. You can do the same thing, it just avoids some of the clutter. Because the switch is attached to the compressor, I snipped the switch harness down to about 9 or 10 inches. With the cable snipped, I used the length of what I cut off to attach this add a fuse. I then used this in the same fuse position as the sway bar disconnect on the Badlands. Using the add a fuse extension we just made, I also butt joined the red yellow cable to it. The red yellow cable has a little diode in there, so you want to use that one, and that's what will give the switch power. Getting everything wired here is as simple as a ground, the black cable, compressor power, the purple cable, and the switch power, that new red-yellow cable we just made. The purple goes on the top position and the red-yellow below it, and then the black on either of the two ground plugs at the bottom of the switch. I like mine all on the same side, so I just keep them right in a line on that right side and it's really clean. From there, I stuffed the red-yellow extension I made into a loom with the beefy power harness and then connected it to the battery and the add fuse, and boom, it was done. Really just had to zip tie everything back together and it all worked, it worked just great. So uh, it will probably take about an hour to an hour and a half if you have done any automotive electric work, which I don't think is too bad. If you've never done any of this stuff, give yourself, I don't know, three to four hours to figure it out. Some final notes, the air truck does need Teflon tape and uses the 19 millimeter box wrench that we talked about at the beginning of this video. To install the new switch plate, you need to remove a few bolts from the manifold cover on the compressor, which is something you will be doing anyway because you need to rotate that air chuck into the lower position. Instructions on how to rotate the air truck are included in your air compressor kit. I thought I was recording when I did it, but unfortunately I wasn't. I am so sorry, I actually think my battery died and I didn't realize it but I promise it's easy and it's in the instruction manual. You will be able to do it. If you did any of that wiring, you'll be able to rotate the chuck. So there you go. It is the easiest air compressor install I have ever done and it fits perfectly in the new Bronco. I believe it works with both the 2.3 and the 2.7 engines. So, I mean, why wouldn't you wanna do this? Uh, again, code McBride to save yourself 10% on the whole package. So thanks again to 4x4 Truck LEDs for sending me this. I hope you all go out and get one having onboard air it's a game changer and if you've been looking for a solution i think this is the best one out there yet so that does it for me if you liked the video please like the video if you have a question leave me a comment and if you want to hang out again make sure to subscribe until next time i'm justin b mcbride